screen share? Does it? Uh, let's see. I can screen share, all right. Uh, well, we are live, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you'd, you'd gone live. Um, welcome uh, to the weekly episode 21. I apologize because if I turn my camera on, this is what you see. So my camera's off. So you be graced with Mr. Juan Bagnell's face for most of the time while I will screen share constantly. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm prepared for you know the weight of the spotlight being all on me for this podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it will be. It will be all <laughs> on you, all on you. Uh, well, beautiful. Uh, how's uh, how's everything going, man? Good. That's it's going great. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen you since yesterday, but. I know. I, well, and, and thank you. I, I should mention that, you know, uh, Thunder E here was kind enough to join us on the Pocket Now Weekly podcast yesterday, which uh, I thought was a great show. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. We're having some fun, like crossover episodes. It's like it's like I'm the Flash and you're Arrow or Supergirl or something. And uh, this is fun. I like this. <laughs> yeah, we've turned this to CW now. This is this is the CW <laughs> network. The CW of technology. I yeah, Fridays it. and Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I, I know I didn't have any uselessness on the docket, and I apologize, guys. You know what? Uh, I will be putting up the show notes from now on, starting next week. I've just been, I've been really tired this week, so you guys will see the show notes in the description uh, starting next well, week. I can't imagine why. I mean, all you did was fly out to California and play a couple of video games, right? It was NBD, no big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let, let's 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 jump to some uselessness. I don't have one yet. I don't know if you have any uselessness to share. I don't, but I kind of want to tie because we're going to be talking about the LG X. Yeah, and I, it, you know, it, it's. I'm tired of this trend where one sort of label for a phone becomes popular, and then it seems like every device has to be named that over the next couple of years. So a, a couple of years ago, it was one. You know, there was the One Drive and the Microsoft Xbox One and the mm -hmm. One Plus One and the HTC One. And now it's the X with the Moto X starting it. And now Sony, and I just wrapped my Sony Xperia X review and the One Plus X and now the LG X. And I'm kind of tired. I, like, I, I'd really prefer companies try and find some other method of naming devices so that they're a bit more unique to their brand. Hey, I'm back. you made we'll it. How, we'll see how long this lasts. Um, <laughs> but I, I definitely agree. Uh, Marcello is asking, will the winners be notified? This is for the giveaway uh, we did with the Sinister Six of Tech. That's what we call ourselves now. Um, <laughs> Um, the winner was announced on Twitter, so just check on Twitter uh, if you are the winner. And I also emailed the winner too. So if you haven't received so an email, you didn't get emailed. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> but but so far the winner has not responded. He has seven days, so keep praying because I will pick a winner on Friday if he hasn't responded. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're, so you're you're holding your contests like uh, what's your name from the ring? Seven days. Exactly. <laughs> so so far so good. I mean, people have gone out and said. He hasn't posted anything on Twitter since June eight. Maybe he's not around. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and also, I mean, like, I, I don't know what you guys went through, but I know for our last big contest at Pocket Now, it uh, we 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 made this huge effort to try and verify that the winner was an actual person, not like this is just someone's spammy contest account. Contest, yeah, yeah. And it was hard. Like, it, it is it is difficult. I mean, we tried that. Um, and it looked like a verified winner just because, you know, right. you kind of look at uh, how long they posted online, things like that, uh, the activities. And, it, and you know. it still took for both of our winners, it still took three or four days for them to both get the message. Like, hey, we're trying to give you guys phones. Yeah. I'm going to check your email. Yeah, this is a gaming PC, guys. So <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> right? Yeah. But uh, back to our topic. I definitely agree with you. Uh, I can call it the mini uselessness of. Right, it's, it's guess, yeah. irritating because I want to say other words when I'm doing phone reviews. I'm tired of the Sony X and the Moto. Yeah, X which is LGX. which you know which which kind of puts bring some you know brings something from E3 where you know Microsoft named the new Xbox One S. I get that slim, sexy, small, whatever you want to call it. But the next version of the Xbox, which they also announced, which is called the Scorpio Project Scorpio, um, is will they call it? Will they go away from the one or will they pick another S name? Xbox yeah. One Super, 
might be it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. And isn't, that, and isn't that kind of awkward, you know? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, the one S is fine. I actually like that name in. It's, it's okay mm -hmm. for a, a revision console, right? Um, but when you're going to your next console, which is the, the PC-like VR console, I mean, <laughs> right. I guess you know, Xbox One VR, super, duper duper. <laughs> and, and I mean, we, we kind of talked about this too a little bit, you know, and we were using cars as metaphors for technology, but, you know, what, I wouldn't mind, say, like a, an LG GT, you know, like that's our hot rod. Mm hmm or you know gp or you know like just anything else you know this this one letter designation and then we have to come up with one letter number combinations and stuff like that when we have other things that we could do that w could allude to powerful devices or sleek and slim devices uh, or i i think the in, i think the industry fell into a, a a rut when they followed apple hey how's it going warren hey Hi. warren what's up buddy yeah all right thumbs up let's do this well like, yeah fresh for the subway sandwich today's hangout spots by subway <laughs> <laughs> all right that well, was I, way funnier than it should have been bro yeah I know. <laughs> but, but I, I think the industry fell into this this rut of you know when apple said the iphone 6 um but at least they had the the opportunity of naming their device iphone you yeah. know so the numbers continues but every other company other than samsung which we you know created the galaxy line has gone into this rut where they have not created a brand to continue and yeah. just build off that, which is why we have the LGX. And and you know we talked about this on the uh, Pocket Now podcast. Th thank you. Well, yes. uh, uh, yeah, I agree. Yes. Where the LGX is the the unmodular version of a modular phone in the most. Why does it look like the flagship line? Yeah. yeah. And, well, yeah. and they're positioning it like it's supposed to be this premium line of products when I, I, like we I, I would really hope that this actually gives uh, like MVNOs like a boost mobile they can pick one of these phones to say hey you know this is the phone we want to carry and Virgin can carry a different like they want to carry the X mock or the I mean if we're just gonna jump into the X we should probably talk about what the X lineup yeah, yeah, we might as well. My, my, um, my camera's on the fritz again. No worries. So where <laughs> LG, what LG is doing is they've made this one sort of phone platform, but then each model of the phone has one specific feature that they focus on, you know, specifically. So there's the, an X Power, and that's got a bigger battery. Um, the X, uh, is it the X Performance or the, no, the X Mach is going to be the one that's got yeah. the more powerful processor? Yeah, the X Mach is the one with the more powerful processor. Um, they also have the and X... X uh, style X Max X Max is the battery. The big X Max battery. is the battery. That's but it is X Power also. So I'm not even sure which is which because well, Power think Max is going to be the X Cam, which uses a similar camera module to the one that we found on the G5. Mm -hmm. That that one I don't think is a part of the release that you're actually showing here, but I think yeah. that one was mentioned previously. But still, regardless, it's um the way that you summed it up e is perfect. It's like we have a modular idea, but you know each phone is a completely sealed, baked individual unit. So that's what that's what we're sort of sticking with. That's what we see here, yeah. and that's really difficult to communicate to customers. Like, what is it that you're getting, and what is it that you want in a phone? And here's the LGX, but the LGX is really six different devices <laughs> that all have one thing different about them. When I think consumers would kind of appreciate having multiple of those things. Like I would like to have an X style and an and an X Max battery together. <laughs> like that to me would be peanut butter jelly time. Or you know, if I'm really using my camera a I'm lot, I jelly. probably do also need a lot of battery life. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm not I'm not super positive on LG strategy here. Yeah, I think one of the things that they really missed out with the strategy is, you know, if you're gonna announce a device like like you said, if this was a really quiet announcement and they had already stated this is going to MVNOs, then I totally understand. I understand that a boost mobile, a uh, cricket you know, um, any of the services can say, oh, get a super awesome camera or get a phone with a big battery and you're paying, what, like 150 or whatever the case may be because you're only buying a phone for one specific feature for it. That makes total sense on MVNO line. But when you're creating this as an LG line, yeah. um, then, then you're like, uh, okay, 
why would I buy this anyway? I mean, D, does it make any sense? It's like you took the G5 and you broke it down into four parts or five parts, whatever, you know, trying to form Voltron, and it doesn't form Voltron. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that, that's the way it is. But anyway, Warren, I want to... And LG will form the head. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Cool. How's it going, Sam? Hey, what up, Sam? What's going on? Do we do any of the E3 talking yet? Oh, no, no, we no we've, we've been fielding some pretty awesome technical difficulties with E's camera here. So yeah, my uh, my camera does. We, we, uh, it's we, back to normal. It's back to normal now. But my hey, no, 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 it's not. Uh, uh, <laughs> you lie. You lie. Not no, only have we not gotten to any E3 chat, we've we've barely made it out of making up a uselessness out of this LG story. Yeah, yeah, we were trying to figure out a uselessness and we started talking about it. We were like, this LG thing is useless, so it is a uselessness. So, I mean, but ultimately, though, I, I think this is, a, this is a brand that, like HTC has been lately, I think is having difficulty sort of defining what their brand is about. And, and I think, don't know that we'll have a clear answer on that until we see what they do with a follow-up to the V series. The, the V series for me was the most compelling phone um, one of the most compelling phones of last year, um, Dang, not just do from it. LG, across Dang, the board. Do it. And Dang, uh, do it. if, uh, if we, well, Dang, that's just it. it. That's just it, though. If we don't see a follow up to the V series, then I think we're 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 pretty clear. LG's in in a bit of in a bit of trouble for defining their brand. If we do see a follow up to the V, that to me could be the step that we take towards what is it that LG brings to the table that's different than other manufacturers. Uh, Sam, any thoughts? What, what, what did LG do again? Well, we uh, were just talking about the X line, where LG there X. are like 12 different phones that can't form Voltron. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, it's only four phones. Only four, right? No, there's a uh, the fifth well, one. There's a camera module. Which yeah, there is going to be an LG X camera. I didn't realize they were, gonna, they were doing five. What, what? Well, I, don't, I, mean, I don't understand. Is, is that really that much different, Sam? <laughs> no, 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 dude. The thing is, I saw... Oh, I was like, five phones. phones? Well, that's totally different. That's, no, that's no, no, not... no. I can't. I was handle. like, okay, so four phones is one thing. You're, you're skewing, you're breaking up functionality of trying to create functionality for four separate phones, and then you throw another one in there. Like, oh yeah, we have this one that's uh, doing that camera, like you said. I'm like, yeah, isn't that what your your last phone, the G5, was all about? You could remove modules, what now? So basically, each module is now a phone. I don't hey, get Bones, it. The G5 no, they're not, they're broke nice down phones. to to form the lions. Call the X lions. The X so lions. What are if you buy all all the X series you, and put it on the table and really concentrate, they form the G5. yeah, they will form the G five. If you throw all of them up in the air like Voltron, they will defender form the of the universe. <laughs> you really, have to focus, guys, I don't really feel you're focusing enough. You have yes. to work as a team. Get in touch focus. with your lion. Get in touch it, with it your X phone. It did not form the leg. No, you're not concentrating, Keith. <laughs> All I feel, Sam, is that you're really focusing on this kick and not keeping the balance of... Voltron. What is wrong with you, Lance? Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's, that's yeah. very wrong. you're Lance. Of course. <laughs> no, for just, just a second, can we just stop for Like, How rad is this Voltron remake? I yeah, mean, I like it it's a lot. It's so much fun. Yeah. It's a lot. Of I'm fun. talking about old Voltron because I have not seen the new one. New one. No, I blitzed, I blitzed I, the, the whole new Voltron. In one I did too. And for yeah. the fact that Warren beats the fact that Warren beats anyone and any seeing anything new, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. I, I am currently watching Peaky Blinders. That's why. So once Peaky Blinders is done, I will jump on. I, I I just started Voltron uh, halfway through. I started last night. So okay. He's already halfway through. Yeah, I'm halfway through, man. No, that from, you know, you, you'll, you'll get halfway through and realize you, it was just one episode. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the first episode. <laughs> the first episode is yeah. an hour and 30 minutes of Voltron. <laughs> anyway, and let's, let's move on. Let's move on from uh, LG and, and misforming Voltron and moving on to E3. So E3 2016 was this uh, past uh, week. Uh, we had major announcements from Microsoft, not so major from Sony, uh, but I wanted to, I, I put out the question, I said winners or losers at E3. I know, why you said you didn't spend much time looking yeah, at Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite so, up to date on it. So I, I, I will summarize all the announcements uh, for you so that at least you can get uh, background. Microsoft announced the Xbox One S, which is the uh, brand new console. Um, it is coming out in August. It is 40% smaller than the current Xbox 
uh, has internal power supply, does HDR gaming, will play 4K uh, Blu-rays as well as will stream HDR content in 4K, and retail starts at 299 all the way to 399 from 500 gigabytes all the way to two terabytes of storage for that console. They also announced, of course, a few games. They announced Xbox Live Anywhere, so Xbox Games Anywhere, which means anytime you buy an Xbox game uh, moving forward, you will be able to play it on your PC and all your game saves will be available. So if you buy Gears of War on Xbox One and you're traveling, you can t- theoretically play it on your Surface and you're good to go. doesn't matter. Right on. Um, uh, a bunch of other announcements, and the other big one was, of course, Project Scorpio, which is their next Xbox coming out next year, which is 4K ready, will display games 4K 60 frames per second, as well as uh, VR ready. Um, in terms of uh, performance, they say they would do at least six teraflops, and they went on to just ask developers, what do you need for 4K and VR content, and we'll build that for you. So that was what Microsoft announced. Sony showed games. Sony showed God of War, which was, it was fantastic to see. They showed uh, Resident Evil. Uh, they also had Resident Evil VR. They had Batman Arkham VR. They showed the game from Norman Reedus and Kojima, where he was holding a baby naked in, in the game. Yeah, and, um, I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, he didn't have such a big name and wasn't a Japanese game maker. Good God, no one else could have got away with that without throwing yeah. up a Kickstarter logo behind it. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. So it was that. Yeah, they true. showed they showed a lot of games. The only other hardware announcement is that uh, PlayStation uh, VR is coming out October thirteenth. Uh, uh, price that is it two ninety nine or three ninety nine? Let me just I can't remember the exact price. But it, I think it's about 399 for the PlayStation VR. So that is where those two lie. Nintendo pretty much was Zelda. Uh, that was the their big focus. Was it, a, uh, was, what was it? Was it a cell shaded Zelda? Um, how would you call it, Warren? It is more anime style. Yeah, anime. More, no, it's more anime. It's, oh, I thought it, it was actually cell shaded because it looks cell shaded. To me. Yeah, no, it's just more animated. And more, it's more. It more looks like it more looks like a very modern anime. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, those are the announcements there. Now, the reason I'm, I'm asking who won or lost is because the, all the big outlets are saying Sony won E3. Sony didn't have to show a new console, and they won E3. Wait, but Sony showed us... Let me every, jump on that. <laughs> almost every single game Sony showed was for, for 2017, except one. Every game was coming out in 2017. They showed a Spider-Man game, which is exclusive to the PlayStation, also 2017. It looked cool. All the games looked cool, but then again, we all know how... We, I mean, uh, Sam, you know how we played Evolved at E3. Yes. Oh, we played it at home. not remind me that I bought that game. Do I'm not. not. So, I'll start off with you, Warren. Who do you think had the best showing? Why? And, of course, your thoughts. So, so do you want me to start off with the best showing or the ramp on Sony or which one? I mean, just, just let ramped it out. on Sony. Sony. Please. Let it out. Let it out. <laughs> all right. Let's start off with the rant, I'll tell you who I felt won at the end. But let's start off with the rant. <laughs> before, you start, before you start, Warren, just so you know, if you can basically hit Verge and Engadget within the same rant, you score 100 points. I didn't read that. Why, why, why the hell would I go to them for E3? <laughs> <laughs> the hell would I go to them for, for, for the four? For what? I just for, like that, you yeah, score 120 points. For them, just to, for them just to show their, their biasness towards every damn thing. Oh, you man. know they have a certain bias. But anyways, starting off with the rant. This, the Verge posted this, and someone else posted. I think Engadget did too. Talking about, oh, it was yeah, it was Engadget actually. It was like and Sony Forbes. didn't need to show hardware at E3. They just had to show the games because they're leading ahead. Fuck that. You sat there and you you announced that the PS4 Neo exists, but then don't show. Why the hell am I gonna go buy a console? Why why when I know something is coming and you're not telling me when it does? So I'm not trying to get caught in a situation where I don't get the best hardware. So instead of telling me and saying, much similar to Microsoft, hey, we have Project Scorpio coming. 2017, here's an Xbox One S. There we go. Now I have a way I can gauge things. Somebody tried to compare it to the Oswald effect or whatever it's called. That doesn't oh, apply today. The that's Osborne. bull. That's the yeah, Osborne effect. That's bullshit that doesn't apply today. People like to be in the know about the products they're doing. They like to go from development all the way to they make the purchase. Kickstarters yeah. and things like that prove that people want to be involved from beginning to end on a product. They like the experience and the journey of that. And Microsoft announcing Project Scorpio now is the smartest thing to do. 
especially since the rumors were already out, versus Sony sitting back there saying, no, we're not going to say anything, not show anything about the PS4 Neo. The reason you're not showing it is you didn't expect what Microsoft showed up with. And you guys exactly. went, you guys went, oh, shit. You cut it from, the, you cut it from, you cut it from the E3 press conference, and then you said, "Oh, we're not going to show anything because you found out what it was going to be." And you said, ah, "We're not there at that point yet, so we need to figure it, out something out." And, so, and I think it's the fact that Microsoft also basically announced a console, um, announced two consoles, one of which is coming out later on this year, mm-hmm. and the fact that it's coming out later on this year with HDR and basically 4K. Streaming basically 4K output. All of us have been complaining about for the longest time. We didn't care about the gaming. It was the streaming that we cared, that we were, were wanted. I'm I'm almost I am almost I'm almost certain because of the way PlayStation responded to this that the 4K was going to be basically dedicated mostly to the, the VR. PlayStation VR and your regular gaming on the screen was not going to be 4K. That, no HDR, no HDR, no HDR, and I think well, that's what scared them. Well, that's the thing though, because the the leaked specs that have been going around for a while for Neo said, if you look at it, it was a slight bump, literally a slight bump that will allow for PlayStation VR. Now, PlayStation VR does not even come close to Vive or Oculus. Like there is a gap between oh, those yeah. two. There is a serious gap. So. You know, I, I agree with you guys. Where when you when Microsoft says, "Hey, look, you know what?" This new Xbox, which is actually technically still our old Xbox, now we just, you know, open up all the cores and streamline a bunch of things because it's now running Windows, right? Can now play 4K for you in terms of video. That's because that's, that's what most people care about now because you have Netflix and all that. Netflix, but also, Amazon, Ultra also, Blu-ray. Yeah, also helps the Ultra Blu-ray market because this will be the cheapest Ultra Blu-ray on the market because uh, Ultra Blu-ray, I think the only one available right now is Samsung. It's like at 500 bucks. Funny, and it's just kind of funny that Sony yeah. is like like a major owner in the Blu-ray market. Market. Yeah, don't have any Ultra Blu-rays out. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think that, that comes into play. And also the way Microsoft even stated um, uh, Scorpio is they, they are not holding back anymore. They, they basically said whatever developers think is best for VR and 4K content at 60 frames per second, that is what we're going to do because we wanted to match PC. That's their whole yeah. model now. They want to come. They want to come as close to it as they possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think Microsoft announced a very balanced um, uh, convent, uh, co- conference. They showed some games. They talked about Xbox a lot. You know, Xbox anywhere. Their play because there was this whole rant about the PC master race, ranting on all about, oh, why buy an Xbox now? Just go build a PC. And I said, that's not the real the point of this. The point <laughs> of them doing this, the point of them doing this is for one thing, it benefits the PC gamers who used to get fucked when all the when when, when all the games were launched on a console first and they would get a port like six months later, or and, and it would be a crappy port. Now they're gonna get the damn game at the same damn time. So if I was you, I'd be really excited that, that I heard about that. And, and the fact that potentially in the future, if I play uh, Division on my P- on, on my Xbox, I might be able to play it also on my PC. Exactly, right. with one purchase, with one purchase, one purchase. purchase. at one the purchase. same damn time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Juan, any any thoughts you want to add to this? I know I know we've been been rambling a little bit here. Well, I mean, so uh, my, my, my very general feelings, and like I said, I'm really not as well-versed on this as you guys are, but it does seem to me that Microsoft was still behind when we were just talking console to console, so it looks like they're leveraging a little bit more of their corporate philosophy that gaming is just another service, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You know, gaming should be a service that you can partake of anywhere that you really want to be gaming. So a lot of this stuff looks like if we devalue what it is that we think of uh, as a console, like what, what, we, uh, what we expect from a console, and really start looking at all the different computing platforms and glowing rectangles that people interact with, then Microsoft has a way to significantly leverage a much larger consumer demographic than just, I bought box and put box under my TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and think about like how that now opens that up to the developers that were only developing for PC and were only on Steam or something like that, that can now... Take their take their game, make one game, and put it within the Windows Store as well as the Steam Store, and be able to reach PC 
and Xbox gamers at the same time. Well, and didn't too. didn't I see some announcement? I don't know if it was an announcement or if it was a rumor that Microsoft was also saying, like, at some point we will be opening up our titles so that they can be published on other services like Steam. Yeah, they, they've been talking about that yet. Yeah, they haven't finalized. I think once... Like there, there wasn't an official yeah, announcement. There was an official right. I think okay. once uh, Windows Anniversary comes out, because okay. I think that's, that's the big thing, because with the Windows Anniversary update... Uh, I still don't have it yet, but um, what you know they've been talking yeah, about either. there is is one you know Cortana is now built in. Yeah. It's no more um, uh, Connect, and which means you can use Cortana off your headset. And I can see Microsoft now making that re repositioning, saying, "Fine, we want to have that um, home connected service." And you know, since we don't have that connected home yet, the Xbox Cortana, since it's in your living room. That's the beginning starting point. That's where we can merge all those IoT services in together. Well, then, um, then I think ultimately, you know, like while Sony might have some kind of lead in developing VR, it seems like Microsoft is nobody cares about. Well, yeah, I mean that's also it, part it, of it. That's the most amazing thing to me is like they're the first to console in VR. Nobody yeah, cares. that's that's the thing though because all the rumors I I heard from E3 is. Uh, one, um, it looks like Facebook is really going to put a lot to back Microsoft on the VR console and bundle Oculus because that's what they want to do. Well, also, that's, that's also what Microsoft might is... open it up to having bundles of both Vive and Oculus, yeah, which that's, now that's... just makes it very, you know. That's what I was going to ask, though, is like with Vive and Oculus occupying the lion's share of the commentary and like daydream and cardboard being sort of the the way that you wet your appetite yeah. on, on playing with VR. Do we think that there's a market for people somewhere in the middle who will want to invest in some kind of PlayStation for hardware and then buy a unique VR experience for that console which we know isn't going to be as good as a Vive or an Oculus? I I think um, PlayStation fans will pick that up, but I think in the long run... Um, right, but don't, don't we think that's that's like a, I already have the PlayStation, PlayStation I'll yeah, buy yeah, this yeah, VR, yeah. not I'm, I'm really interested in VR, so my solution is going to be buying a PlayStation. Yeah, and no, I know, I, that's what I was saying, the PlayStation fans will buy that, but I think when you whet your appetite with Daydream, Gear VR, and all that... Um, yeah. You know, those companies, and are, are, especially Gear VR, is going to push you directly to Oculus. And, and you're looking at Oculus and Vive at that point. And I think the problem with PlayStation VR, from what I saw, it, it was nice, but it yeah. was not nice enough. That's what, that's you know what, what I mean. Kenny, like, that's it, what Kenny kind of said. It, it, was not, it, was not, it was not like Oculus or Vive. Like, you know, when you get into Vive, you go, shit. This is great. And Oculus, you're like, okay, this is well done. Well, I have to believe there are, there are radical diminishing returns when we're looking at phone hardware to console hardware. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying the, fo the phone hardware to me is, is truly the wet appetite. You're like, this is No, really, I, I know. What, I, know, what I'm really saying cool. is, is, is the price difference involved in having a console and a VR solution right, for right. that console can't be that much better when you compare it to what you really get when you look at a Vive and a gaming PC. You know what I, I mean? mean? Like, I mean, yeah, like true. Those, but, but those but differences think about, are got to be more stark than... Yeah, but, but, but think about it this way, right? Most people still... Now, most people are buying their, their phones on a $20 a month basis, right? That's what... Uh, at least right. a lot of in T-Mobile and the rest are doing that. So you're paying only 20 bucks a month, but you paid 500 for your PlayStation when you bought it, whatever the time it is, or at least 399 now. And then another 399 for the PlayStation VR... So you're looking right. at a, you know, a cool... Right. And, and, and what I'm saying is that that six to $800 <laughs> price point before you've even spent any money on games, and then the VR is better, mm -hmm. but it's not like yeah. five better yeah. than what you're going yeah. to It's got to be kind of disappointing. Know. Well, yeah, yeah, it is. You know the thing that... I, I, I wonder how many of this is going to sell, because I know PlayStation has a lead in, in, in hardware. It's like 20 million more, but I always point, in, in a post I did a few months ago, I always point to the fact that while they're ahead, if you look at the North American numbers, they're not, they're not that much farther ahead than Xbox right now. Then that's where the probably the majority of the VR purchases are going to come from. So it's going to be really interesting to see how much of Sony can convert of that. Uh, like maybe like the 14 million that they have here in the U.S. to convert to that versus the currently 13 million that are, are, are that have Xbox Ones that potentially may upgrade to the uh, you know Project Scorpio at some point and then get VR in that manner. And it, it, that'll be interesting how that works. I, I, I think Sony, by not announcing something about that PS4 Neo, 
has allowed Microsoft to have a bit of an opening in the North American market to probably catch up on that lead or even surpass them. Because the thing is, Xbox has never done well globally. They've always gotten their ass kicked in that in that regards. <laughs> so for me to look at that 40 and 20 million number, you have to look at that a little bit more realistically and say, well, what markets do they compete in directly the best? And that is really U.S. and the U.K. They're killing them in the U.K., but the U.S., that number is so much more closer. But it even begs the question when you start looking at the hardware. What was re- what was announced for the um, for the PlayStation VR? We saw it, right? It looks like something that is an accessory with its own processing unit mm-hmm. to whatever they're going to have, whatever the new PlayStation Four is going to be. And what Microsoft announced doesn't seem as though it's going to be a you know just like a an accessory with a module. It looks as though the hardware itself is going to be powerful enough to run that headset. Yeah. So I'm 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 getting a lot more worried about what PlayStation actually was going to put out there and how different it's going to is going to be by the time we see it. What in Q3 of this year or Q4 of this year? Yeah. yeah. Allegedly, I, I, I'll, I'll, I, I, I'm putting my money on it. We're not going to see any of those I, I put, until E3 next year. I would put it I'm, about, I'm, I'm actually, I actually think we're, we're probably will see it first quarter. Um, they want to release it of the last quarter of this year because of Christmas, but yeah, I think X, Xbox will release um, the Xbox One S. One S is August. Uh, One S is August. Yeah, no, but I, I, I believe Sony is just. I, I believe Sony is just. No, they're not going to show that again until E3 next year. They're all really? going to show their stuff again at E3 next yeah, year. Yeah, I, I think I think it's E3 next year. But also th- the one th- the one thing that no one really mentioned is um, what's his name? Uh, AMD put out a press release because AMD makes the GPUs for all of them. And from their press release, you can see they hinted that you know that new graphics card they just announced that the RX 480 that's 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. That is pretty much the graphics card that is going to run the Xbox One. At least the is going to be based off that model. The, the Have Xbox any specs come out yet? I know, like, people have been kind of bitching on Reddit, like, don't ask if you're going to buy it until the specs come out. But. Um, I mean, no, it's kind of stuff that they've mentioned. They've, they've talked about six teraflops of... I mean, mean uh, for the Scorpio yeah. or for the AMD card? I'm sorry, for the AMD. Oh, AMD okay. card, no, no, no specs out. I mean, it's it's launching on the 28th, so we should hear something next week. Oh, okay, gotcha, and, gotcha, gotcha. Like from, you know, from the, you know, PC hardware guys and things like that. Um, uh, who but, doesn't like a good graphics shootout? Then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So. <laughs> But but I but I I think with with the Scorpio I mean I, I somebody mentioned is it going to be built closer to a PC if I was Microsoft I think it, they need to build it like a PC at least where it's more modular so yeah. they can now upgrade the Scorpio at least for you know a couple of at least one more generation in a sense where you're not buying a new console you're buying you know a piece that you add to it and then you know you're good I think that's the best way to go. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely agree with you guys. I think Microsoft had the more balanced, better showing where they were able to show people a roadmap, you know. And they brought back the the rooms um, that was yeah. on the uh, was on the Xbox 360, which uh, I know EA is going to take full advantage because EA is going to have to having tournaments through yeah, the Yeah, the tournament like thing that. that that was pretty cool. Yeah, so you know you're going to not have FIFA tournaments. You can jump in that will go for a month long, or you know Madden tournaments and things like that. Um, so that, that I think that's that's something cool that uh, you know is more gamer centric than just say announcing games because if you were at the Sony press conference, this is the reaction we got. Um, God of War came out. Everyone, I was like, yes, finally, thank God. And then they just kept on showing games. There was no talking. It was just like you know video reel after video reel after video reel. But what was funny was I was there with uh, Danny from Royal Flush Magazine, and she's like, why are they all yelling woohoo about, like, we don't know what the game is. You know, when they, they like, <laughs> Sony fanboys. You really have know. no idea oh, what man. it is. It's not yeah, like Do you know what I got from that? I got, Sony it, fanboys. What I got from that announcement, simply, that Kratos might not be the main character. He's like, he, he literally was the tutorial voice, teaching the kid wow. how to do stuff. So what if Kratos is really not the freaking main character? To me, it's, <laughs> to me, to me, it's, to me, it's the damn game. I was like, oh, it's The Last of Us. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, exactly. I, that, I was like, this is The Last of Us. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, got in the same frame and the same type of, you know. I mean, but, but but I think I think what it was for me it was funny it was just watching everyone yell before a logo comes up. 
before we know the company, <laughs> before we right. know what game it even is. You well, know? don't 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 we think like Sony had ringers in the audience that were like, no, of course they did. No. No, I'm I mean, pretty sure they did. They're pretty I sure mean, they did. They did, but regular pe- press people beside well, me were doing the same it, thing. But that's the but that's the but that's the mentality. You that's only need a couple people to start that off. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. People kind of get all hyped up about stuff, and you don't even know why you're yelling, but you're like, ha ha, yay! No, no, it's, it's all the all Sony fanboyism, man. I'm telling you, I'm not I'm not picking on those guys, but it's that Sony fanboyism that that happens. They have that mentality. No matter how many times Sony actually bones them more often than actually helps them out, wow. they'll continue. <laughs> I'm just saying the truth. They all share about games that they're not going to see for two years at every damn E3 conference. Yeah, I, I will give. I will give. I'll give you that one too because the one that really annoyed me was the Last Guardian that everyone was yelling about. That game has been in production since 2007. Okay. Exactly. So I I, do, I was not excited. I not graf- shrug. You know, graphically the game looked like it was back in 2007. You know, artistically, the game looks almost like you should have made Ico again. Yeah. So, but I mean, I I, I hear it. The excitement was there. Um, Nintendo was the one that really annoyed me the most, but. (laughs) They won. Don't forget about the crash. They won with one game. Again. They won with one game. Again. This is not the first time they've done this at E3. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, but not to 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 me though. To me, uh, I don't think I don't I don't I don't call it winning. I think Nintendo is stuck. It really is stuck. <laughs> they are a stuck company because that showing of Zelda. Yes, it was great. Zelda looks fantastic. Just means that's all you have. Uh, I mean, I, we know NX is coming out next year. But to be honest with you, what else the hell they need to develop? Another Wii U game that's not gonna sell. No, I mean, I actually wanted to, I actually wanted to see your future because if you're going to delay. They, I mean, so I they, understand they said NX is coming out next year, but I mean, you're not telling me anything about what that future is. So, like, you know, people like me who just I sold my Wii last week, Wii U last week. I just dumped it on eBay. I'm like, I'm done, because you know, when they told me Zelda's gonna come out on NX, I'm like, fine, I'll get it there. But I even know what mm-hmm. console I'm picking up there. Well, I don't. I, I held off on selling off the Wii U just because that game might drop before the, the NX comes out, that there is a rumor that, that it might drop first in February, which is traditionally where Zelda games have dropped. And so it might drop in February, and then it, the game will eventually and obviously be NX compatible or something like that at some point. So that thing's sticking around there until I got confirmation that it's not coming out until the NX comes I, out. I, no, I was done. I updated it, and I was like, eBay, here you go. Thank you very much. Goodbye, uh, Nintendo. Anyway, let's 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 move on to to WWDC. Well, we we haven't talked about, like, the awesomeness of that game. Like, the the, the Breath of the Wild. Like, the the amount of demo that they showed, which I think I've I've never seen a game at E3 shown that well before. Well, they they had to. That's what they were showing, though. Yeah, but but, but even then, even, even Sony, who really didn't have anything else but games, didn't go that deeply in depth with stuff on a game like that. That's something you don't see... And E3, and the fact that they're saying, yeah, this is about a small percentage, not even like a double-digit percentage of the game that they showed, and, and then they kind of showed a little bit of how big the world actually is, which is insanely big. Well, I mean, Zelda is what a, usually what a 20 to 40-hour game, right? Yeah, roughly yeah. around well, that. Roughly it's, around that. But, but, it's but, also, it's but when, a, you have, when you have the fact that Nintendo isn't showing anything, everybody has like multiple titles they're showing, you can show at least a good, you know... 30 minutes of gameplay. And, and I'm just saying, you can show 30 minutes and it won't touch anything. 30 minutes to an hour, it won't touch anything in the game because you're like, you know, this is an Well, as involved. much as they showed in that game and the timing that they played, if you were playing a normal Zelda game, you actually probably would have gotten midway through the first act of sort of the, the, the game. The, when, you, when you watch it, it doesn't even look like the game itself had even really even started yet. You're just kind of Drop, you're literally dropped into the world and you're trying to figure out what's going on. It's very similar to what happened in the very first Zelda game, but you were just dropped into the world and you had to figure out what's going on, everything around you, and, and, and kind of make your way. They have so much... It, it, it finally feels like they had Western influence in the game because now there's, there's so many different things that you can do that you couldn't do before. They have crafting things that are going on in the game now. They have weapons that have durability within the game, weapons can wear out. Yeah, but that's, a very, that's a very Asian-centric um, MMO style. Yeah, yeah style. but you're bringing more MMO, MMO compatibility. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop poop. R- RPG. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stop poop owing. This is this is actually big for a game that No, no, no one's poop owing. We're just saying what he did. No, we're just saying it's it's I know I know that it is. Yeah. Can I have my excitement, please? Go, go. Can I have my excitement, please? Because 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 my 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 my, my game is more important than in all the rest of those games. Zelda's like here. <laughs> those games are more important than all the other games. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. I, 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 I,
fight, the uh, Android iOS fight, this gets really boring when Apple falls too far behind. So when we see these types of updates, when we see these kinds of upgrades to things like the mapping application, you know, Apple Maps is finally starting to add features that we just take for granted on Google Maps. Well, that's actually a really good thing for the overall state of, uh, state of mapping apps because that's the default that you have to interact with if you own an iPhone. So those types of things I, I find to be very, very beneficial to this conversation. <laughs> Um, but ultimately, what we see, like uh, iOS 10, had 10 major updates. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did see them updating, I'm I'm really interested to see where they go. We're seeing increased 3D touch operation throughout the entire user interface, so we can feel pretty confident that future iOS devices will probably start getting rid of things like home buttons over the next couple of years. Uh, it's interesting watching Apple, you know, start embracing gestures as opposed to just back arrows and and home button, adding like another feature. If you triple tap, you get this. If you quadruple tap, you get that. If you quintuple tap, you can do this. Um, that that to me makes me happy because I think we've been overworking the home button for a really long time. And then uh, just you know, when we see some of the refinements, Apple Music got a top to bottom refresh that makes it look a little bit more like a zoom. So that's definitely positive. I, I think that's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, and then what was the other one that I was really that I was really stoked about? I'm, I'm losing something here. Ah, it's probably not that important. But I, I, what I see is an Apple that's responding better to market influence. You know, the iPhone SE I think is evidence of them trying to find areas where they can be more competitive, and I think iOS 10 is the same. It's it, like, where are we falling behind, really falling behind in terms of what Android can do and how can we play catch up? And now our consumers expect this deeper level of functionality. You know, a Android started with way more functionality, but it wasn't a very pretty operating system. So now running the Android N developer preview, we see Google really trying to focus on that user experience, and now we see Apple trying to add deeper interactions to iOS, and that's a positive. But that also means that these two forces, Google and Apple, are going to meet in the middle, and the the substantive differences between the two are going to be getting finer and finer. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts of anyone else? Yeah, uh, I think it's really interesting that, um, you know, Microsoft released uh, Cortana on the... Um, you know, on Windows. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, th no, this is Apple we're talking about. Nah. Apple released Siri. Oh, that was the other thing. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sam. They're is that, copying is that... Microsoft, you freaking thieves. Well, well <laughs> but, but, but what I think could be really interesting, again, Siri's not great. She's not. Yeah. She's really not. <laughs> it's, 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 why it's, are you talking? Why are you talking? That that the one came in, in that way. Like he was. She was. He was talking to his best friend. <laughs> he was trying to get back <laughs> to her. Yeah, exactly. But she she's loves really me. not. She's really not. She's that great. Great. <laughs> but but what's me. really interesting and where Siri could improve <laughs> radically is if developers. I, I feel developers will take advantage of Siri APIs way more aggressively than they ever did Microsoft with Cortana APIs. So the notion that I could just pick up an iPhone and say, uh, hey Siri, open Snapchat, send my wife a message, and then it just does it. And I don't have to do, I don't have to open an app, start interfacing with that app, and then produce something. Um, where Google's strategy with Google Now is to put Now throughout all of the operating system, right? You know, Now on tap will scan your screen, do whatever you want. It, it's gonna be pervasive in that way. I think Apple could actually do something really interesting with Siri if they can get developers on board. That, that to me, is, is, is one of those few philosophical differences that I think is still stark between the two companies. And whoever gets to better third-party app integration first, that's going to be a happy day. I, I really feel that's going to add a significant benefit to how we interact with our phones. I can just kind of pop onto one of my Bluetooth headsets and just start talking and have various apps and services respond without me having to handle my phone that yeah. could be really compelling. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really interesting because Microsoft recently, a big thing that Microsoft did recently that a lot of people kind of um, let go under the radar, that kind of went under the radar was the fact that um, something you could do for Windows Phone is now being transferred over to Android, which is basically using Cortana with your band. So you can now use your band with Cortana even on Android devices. So, I, and Nobody Apple, I'm sure, already has, sorry? Nobody's doing that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nobody's doing um, that on Android. You know, Apple's going to 
is going to do that with Siri. It's, it's, it's inevitable. Um, Siri is going to be on your um, Mac OS. It's going to be on your phone. So it's, it's this whole proliferation of, you know, this assistant, this AI assistance on your devices. And I think even, even though Microsoft might have gotten there first, or Apple, you can make that argument. It's just we see that this is the way the market is going. This is pure evidence that the AI assistant is most likely here to stay. Oh no, no, de definitely. Which, which is why I think, be clippy. I think the Xbox is the Should most important clippy. thing for Microsoft right now because they have no mobile presence. It's gone, right? Yeah. Uh, but you do have a presence in homes. I mean, that's where the AI, the AI assistant right now is called. The best one is called um, Alexa. That's the best AI assistant right now. As much as Google now does a much better job. The one that everyone in people's mind is that you can tell Alexa to do anything. She mm -hmm. will shop for you. She will tell you what's in your Amazon cart. That's what people know. So Cortana has to be that on the Xbox for the whole. It needs to be that. Microsoft needs to expand in that avenue, which is what you know uh, Apple wants to do now that they announce yeah, Amazon more. goes. Here's an Amazon store in the Xbox. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, yes. I mean, there, there is a mall that has an Amazon experience. It's like one of those Samsung kiosks, and you can go and you can handle a Kindle and you can play with a with an Alexa. I mean, like, it's it's set up like a little living room. It's, yeah, but the, the problem with Alexa, I found out, uh, even though I had one and returned it, I, I, was, uh, I was in L.A., I, I spent some time with my god sister, and they have an Amazon Echo. So I walked by and I said, Alexa, what's in my Amazon cart? And of course, he told me everything in their cart, nah. which, <laughs> which is not so good. I mean, you know. Well, and, and that's one of the things that I definitely, uh, like, as a voice assistant gets smarter, it really needs to, like, for example, if people are listening to this on their speakers and I say, okay, Google, search for midget porn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, my voice assistant should start learning the nuances and characteristics of my voice yeah. so that it can at least say, like, hey, that's not something you search for very often. Are you sure you want me to search for it? <laughs> Hi, Juan. It seems that there are other people around. Are you sure you want me exactly. to do this? Exactly. Yeah, I, there's just something something needs to happen. No, there. No, just that, that to me is, is a very is a very specific and, and very real privacy concern, security yeah. concern, when I've got, like, encryption on my phone and it's tied to a pin and my fingerprints, uh, my fingerprints uh, scan, and then someone can just walk up and start talking to my phone and get information. <laughs> um, and, and, it's, and, it's not really a great... What, 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 is, what is your... Remember. If, you're bilingual, oh, if, you, if it's bilingual, it's shit. If, you, if someone else tries to come back and ask it, it's shit, like... Try to speak and just speak back in Spanish or say like no speak English or something like that. Not being English. Not being English. But the funny thing is, if you remember when Alexa came out, we had this whole conversation of why, um, because there was a report that Google had tried was going to release something similar, but had backed away from it. And uh, I put, I posited that it might have been about the security concerns, right? And now I think we're getting back to that point. All these devices, or all these assistants, or all these interface devices, have to be secure in a way that you know that doesn't break the security of this, this yeah. of your PC, or any other device you have in your home. And when you just have a device that says "we'll listen to your voice" and doesn't have that control, like that voice um, recognition uh, added to it, that becomes an issue. Like you just said, one, you're basically giving someone an open door to all your encrypted devices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem we will get to at some point in time, but at this point, we're moving on to the very next topic. Oh. <laughs> Even better. Even um, better. Uh, some information has leaked on the Galaxy Note 7. Word, first of all, has come out that Samsung will jump into production of the device next month in July, and a launch date will be uh, August 2nd. Uh, this was leaked by Sam Mobile, which is a Samsung mobile fan site, but they always usually write about this stuff. I yeah, they usually write about And, and people do not be confused. The Galaxy S, the Galaxy Note 7 is the name of the Galaxy Note 6. So the Galaxy <laughs> Note 6 will be called Galaxy <laughs> Note 7. 7. They just want to match the numbers up. They want to match the numbers now because it's, it's about time anyway. And it yeah. says the... Uh, it, so according to the image, it looks like... Let me actually share the image, I think. Oh, an share. image. Share the image here. Boom. There we go. So, so the image here of the flyer says August or the whatever it is uh, from the PC says August 2nd, uh, the next Galaxy. 
open doors at 10 a.m., uh, uh, which would be at the Lincoln Center, Alice Tolley Hall in New York City. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's subtle. Yeah, so... <laughs> Wait, I don't think this has even been released yet. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the press doesn't even have these yet. Yeah. That's a, that's a press release for the rest of us. Yeah. So um, the rumored flagship specs are 5.8 inches, so it will be slightly larger than the last one. Uh, QHD curved edge display. It might be just an edge device all the way through. I'll uh, be very I hope happy. There's, there's I, two hope so. I really hope there's two I, I would be very happy. I what? do not like the edge. Sorry, just got to live with it, man. Live with it. Uh, I want, I want yeah. to go there. It's like that edge was like deep, like, ah, curve. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Um, wrap around. Snap, Snapdragon it was useful. 8. A23 processor, uh, or, and of course the uh, Exynos equivalent, an iris scanner, IP68 certified, water resistant body, USB Type C, 4000 milliamp massive battery in that bad boy, and of course whatever extra Samsung would like to throw in. So, thoughts USB on. Type C? Yeah, USB C. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah, at this point now. So, wait, thoughts on the announcement? Uh, I'll start off with you, Mr. Uh, Juan Bagnell. At least this supposed, you know, rumored launch date announcement specs, everything we just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you've done a very good job of summing up everything. Um, I'm just happy that we're skipping a year into the future, and I think it'll be awesome to see Samsung, you know, with their holography display and their 12-core processor and their, their 3D camera array with full augmented reality capabilities. I'm just really glad we're skipping this year's technology and going to the 7, so... That, that's what I'm most excited about. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, it, this is going to be the, one of the biggest phones of the year. So um, to see that they're getting their branding on track, I think, I mean, that's about as much as I can really speculate on, on what we've heard so far. To me, that's actually one of the biggies, is we don't have that weird mental gymnastics between talking about a Galaxy S6 and a Note 5 in the same year. Yeah. And now everything is going to be on the same page. Although I could separate that in my head. That's pretty obvious, but some people, for some reason, need a number to, to, it, to it's, associate you know, with it. it, it when, when we have those kinds of situations, though, and I'm really trying to work quickly, and I was like, well, you know, the camera from the S5 is different than the Note 4, so then with the S6, then you had the Note 5, and then that, I mean, like, you, you're you're moving back and forth so quickly in conversation that I always inevitably get tongue-tied on mm -hmm. one generation of the phone, or I swap two phones out or something like that. So... I mean, even just from the standpoint of a reviewer, like, that branding helps me. <laughs> so I'm happy to see. Yeah, because, yeah, like, the camera on the S7 is not as good as the camera on the Note 7. Because if you tell somebody a normal, just a normal consumer, and you go, you know, the Note 6 ha has a better camera than the Galaxy S7. But 7 is bigger than 6. Uh, right. <laughs> this is it, done. And eventually they just need to basically say, okay, these is a, next year we're releasing the 8th line. And the year after that is the nine line, and the year after that is the ten line. Yeah. Because by the time you know they get to the, the one zero, you know they're gonna do something pretty weird. Oh yeah, they, they, they names. They're gonna call it the the, the universe line, or yeah. something. I don't know. No, it'll be the Galaxy, Samsung, <laughs> no, Galaxy no. Note X. No, it'll be the Galaxy Note one hundred, then two hundred, then three hundred. <laughs> so I start the numbers over again. 100, 200, 300, 400 series, 500 series, and they're going to start Nokia branding the hell out of their phones. How about this called the, 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 the Defender line, you know, make it a little voltron and just to poke fun well, at, again, I mean, this at, is that at LG. LG. We're talking about with the, with the LG X, like, come up with a, a, a name, you know, come up with a word, like, or, or come up with something well, that we already did. understand from another industry, like, use car designation. Go back to the 90s. Well, they yeah. did. They did yeah. have. Remember, gotta remember. Optimus. One, they, they had the Optimus. Yeah. The Optimus was their was their branding. And then they lost it. And HTC has also gone to ten now. Physical mm -hmm. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't think the M10 would have sounded as great. The as first 10. person to come out with an 11 gets my money. It goes to like, the 11. Just, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a Galaxy S11. Just, it's, yeah, no, 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 no. Sam Samsung, should, Samsung should, after they go, when they get to 10, the next device should be over 9,000. That's it. <laughs> Just call it the Samsung over 9,000. Over 9,000. <laughs> Everyone who loves Dragon Ball Z will buy that phone. Yeah, <laughs> so all 12 of us. You've got 12 <laughs> phone sales. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. The cost um, of production, each phone costs a million dollars. <laughs> there was something I wanted to share I just found and I totally forgot. Wow. 
Oh, well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so T-Mobile's uh, Tuesdays, which is their Tuesday free giveaway, has been going on pretty well, uh, except for Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this it, also could have been a uselessness. Uh, it, yeah. It was Domino's was, was more bitching than T-Mobile. I mean, like, you enter a partnership with T-Mobile for this stuff. T-Mobile Tuesdays, if you're a T-Mobile customer, every Tuesday T-Mobile gives out free stuff, usually four things. Uh, the first thing they give out was you get one one stock in T-Mobile, which, uh, whatever. Um, but they gave out Warcraft tickets. They gave out Domino's pizza. They gave out... Uh, uh, Dairy Queen, no, not, uh, not Dairy, Dairy, uh, Dairy Queen, uh, Fro- Queen uh, Frosties, um, and uh, some other stuff. It was cool, and Domino's uh, got hit pretty big uh, last week. Uh, they had a huge amount of orders, and they just could not fulfill a lot of them. So Timo was switching and out that out and offering um, uh, f- uh, like. Free trips or fifteen fifteen dollars off your lift ride uh, right now. That's what they're offering you in place of Domino's. I mean, I really like to get Domino's pizza once in a while. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> we made a Domino's run not too long ago. It was it was, it was fine. It's like no pizza for you. You come yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so so that was Domino's that. was saying it was too costly. What, what, what was no, the other system I don't think could handle it. They, they, they got it. hit big. You know, it's like it's like you know how people you know you know how like you know so t- was, tickets tickets for for a movie go online like Star Wars. And I then, am pretty, pretty sure they did not account for how many <laughs> T-Mobile users are in college. <laughs> Actually, that explains something. That really explains something because when I saw the uh, World of Warcraft and I was walking out of um, the theater. It was a line of people going to see the movie, and I was like, "These could not be World of Warcraft fans." Because <laughs> <laughs> <Stop being so laughs> you had you had groups of girls who looked like they just literally heard about the movie for the first time. So it's like, wow, it makes sense. It makes sense. I'm not saying that women do not play World of Warcraft. <laughs> I'm just saying he's like, "Why are you here?" I'm just saying, if people not who play World of here. Warcraft most likely are not. Um, they're well, not that many women. Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay. sure that I'm pretty sure the gamer geeks and nerds that watched mine saw that to just to have their look like heaven, I belong here. Heaven, heaven, we see females in real life. <laughs> and uh, the final, the final topic is the One Plus Three. So that came out this week. Um, uh, One Plus did a good thing. They announced the phone, and it's available to buy. Off the bat, which is something they haven't done in their life cycle as a company. Um, I know you've had them all growed up. I know, yes. Um, uh, Juan, I think you've seen the device, right? Uh, Have you or no? Not yet. I I, I don't have my hands on one yet. Okay. Uh, But you guys have covered the device on uh, Pocket Now. Um, Yeah, we've been we've been talking about it, but again, we we still don't have a a review on the schedule yet. Yeah. So um, th- just thoughts on the launch process. The grown-up version of OnePlus is finally here in terms of uh, uh, of handling things. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll start off with you, Mr. Uh, uh, Sam. How about you? I, I, I I've seen that phone only for, what, like 30 seconds when you showed it to me? And yeah. what was my reaction? I think my reaction was, ah, okay, great. And that was it. I don't care about the OnePlus anymore. Uh, I, I think the OnePlus has... They've burnt your goodwill more. with you? It's not even burning their goodwill. It's, it's, they're no longer relevant because everybody's doing that now. And these are bigger manufacturers who are making affordable phones in the mid, in, in the mid range. And they're using not um, not, not a skewered um, kind of, uh, not a forked kind of uh, form of Android. They're using full Android. And actually, I think One OnePlus is using full Android now I, also, right? No, no, they're using the Oxygen OS, which is oh, the slightly, OS. slightly skewed uh, version of Android. Yeah, it's, it's it's just not. It's to me, it's no longer worth it. There was a time when it was nice when um, all these uh, companies were coming out and uh, you know almost fighting against the the mod the modders and phones or whatnot. But now it's just it just turned out that. So, so you're you know, you're saying that a phone that is three ninety nine. That has uh, 5.5 inches. It's got a big battery in there. Uh, Android, uh, so Snapdragon 820, six gigs of RAM, 60 oh, yeah. megapixel camera, USB Type C. What oh, else God. am I missing, Mr. Juan? Back Anything else? Um, it's, it, and it's probably faster than the Galaxy S7. No. No. Uh, n- not really. Um, <laughs> but it's cheaper. It is cheaper. But it's, I mean, like, do you compare it when it's, what, $200 cheaper, no, cheaper than yeah. a Galaxy S? I mean, it isn't water-resistant, so that's that's something. Yeah. Here's, here's what I don't think, 
uh, a lot of <clears throat> excuse me. Here's what I don't think a lot of uh, the hardcore tech aficionados really understand when we're looking at a lot of these flagship devices is we're no longer paying that money for performance. Like yeah. the the differentiating factor now, what what makes up the difference in that two hundred dollar price is stuff like build quality, lifestyle features, accessory features. You know, like having a heart rate scanner and a water resistant build <clears throat> is one of those things that you're going to pay for for on a Galaxy S7 over a OnePlus. Just getting a Qualcomm 820 isn't really that big of a coup. <laughs> like that's that's not. A huge deal anymore, and we've got mid-ranger processors creeping up, which get pretty close to uh, flagship-level performance. And uh, like the Qualcomm 650 is more powerful than the Qualcomm 808 from last year. So you know, we're going to see this increasingly this this divide increase. You know where you get diminishing terms, uh, d diminishing returns in terms of performance. So like a Galaxy S8, I doubt is going to be some radically you know massive performing handset over the Galaxy S7. I think that's going to get finer and finer. But yeah. what we will expect are different types of lifestyle features to make up some of that deficit. If it's build, if it's fashion, if it's style, if it's uh, just maybe it's a different approach to camera tech or a modular idea, stuff like that, that's really what's going to make up that difference. So OnePlus walked us into an era where we started talking about market disruption. Or I, I shouldn't even say that OnePlus did. I would say that the Nexus did. The Nexus walked us into territory where you could disrupt the price of a smartphone, have a flagship-grade processor if you were willing to compromise on a bunch of other things. And OnePlus took that and sort of refined that, that discussion and came up with, I think, a better approach to it. But now we've got a number of companies that are all in the same space trying to attack that mid-range price point with a flagship processor, and then they pick and choose some of those other elements. Like maybe we don't give you a quad HD screen, or maybe we give you three gigabytes of RAM instead of four. You know, we're finding those other compromises throughout. And so for OnePlus, it's, you know, last year it was no NFC radio. Um, and this year, I mean, they're still holding to this idea that you don't need micro SD card expansion. I don't know. Why. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing, because the OnePlus is a dual SIM device. And... Um, I've forgotten what manufacturer has. I think maybe it's not, it's not blue, but somebody else had a... It was Huawei. Uh, the Huawei P9 is a dual SIM or a SIM and SD card. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, a few Asian, like a, yeah. a Oppo, I think, has a tray like that. Yeah. Huawei has a couple phones that do yeah, that. Yeah, the, 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 the P9 tray is just, it's just two slots, but the way it's designed, you can change the second slot into an SD card slot or a SIM slot, one of the two. So you can still have your dual SIM device, or you can have um, single SIM and SD card. And I'm like, why is there no SD card in here? It doesn't cost you any. I mean, in terms of cost, it's minimal, very minimal. I was well, but isn't that also the situation that we find ourselves in when we're dealing with a company that's probably eking out a profit, super, super lean, off of devices that they're selling at you know lower price tier? You know, like you're. It's like the old HP strategy from the early 2000s. Like you, know, you, we might only make pennies on this printer, but we're also going to charge you fifty bucks at Best Buy for a printer cable. Cable, you know? and, and and of course, you know, printer cartridges. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, and and ink and everything else too. It's like the printer; they're, 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 they're almost losing campaign. money on the printer. So I mean, I mean, true, true. That may be the case, but I think that's something that I would rather have in. It makes sense, uh, especially these. Oh no, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying that in terms of their strategy, if it if it costs them seven cents to put an SD card, I'm totally. I have no idea what those numbers are. But if it costs them seven cents per phone to put in an SD card reader as opposed to just dual SIM readers, then that's seven cents profit that they don't make if they still want to hit this three ninety nine price point. I guess I guess so. This is the case, but I, th I think the the main issue here. I mean, because last week, uh, this last week, we saw, I saw a bunch of you know bigger Android side talking about how Lenovo dropped the ball uh, with the announcement <clears throat> of, of the Moto Z. I think because they said you know the OnePlus was announced and launched, and you know I still think Mo Lenovo sells more Droid versions of their phones on Verizon than I think OnePlus will ever sell. Uh, that's just me. I don't know the numbers, but I think that's one of the reasons why. I, I, I think Lenovo's own case was just 
they should have actually had their launch windows closer and not, you know. No, I I agree. I I think and, and I think you're right, but you know, the Can droid branding me? is something that I think consumers are way more. I mean, again, Hello? we're talking to an audience that oh, yeah, understands yeah. tech okay. and is and are fans of following this stuff to a much finer degree than general consumers. Consumers see the droid brand at Verizon and they know what that is. Yeah. Um, you know, very few people outside of our circle know what a OnePlus is. You know, mm -hmm. so you know whatever Droid Turbo they want to put out on Verizon is handily going to outsell, I think, every OnePlus phone that's ever been made. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so the question here is, if if you were to give advice to OnePlus, and again, this is where we're giving free advice to OnePlus, how would how would you tell them to? Uh, what was the advice you would give them to help expand away from hardcore users? Because yeah, fanboys are fanboys, but if they want to grow, they need to appeal to anyone who's looking for a good, affordable phone. It's easy. Get with a carrier. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, 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 you can work with two out of the three of them off the bat. And, and not just get with a carrier, get with T-Mobile. T-Mobile and AT&T. Actually, T-Mobile and AT&T would be... <coughs> no, I think I, even Sprint, Sprint, even Sprint, too. Yeah. The phone won't work for Sprint, though. They have to, no, they I know. They have to, they'll they have, have to change it. Yeah. There's a lot of things they have to change to get to work for... If you're going to try and get to work for Sprint, you might as well try to get to work for Verizon, too, at that point. Nah, and, 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 you, and I, I think that's foolish. I, I really feel like... <laughs> I really feel like OnePlus could be the flag, the crown jewel phone of an MVNO. So whoever's whoever's on piggybacking on AT and T or T Mobile's can, networks, you, know, you go directly there and you you slap like a, a you know a know. Metro PCS label. I Metro forget. cricket. I think. No, yeah, I'm thinking about it now. They they could really be not necessarily a flagship phone, but another powerful option if the Fi network ever opens up to more than just Nexus phones. That could be a great great. Uh, way for them to get at least introduced into the into some type of NVNO, you know, into some type of dis discussion point with something big because even if I think they go with it, a, a Metro PCS or somebody small, it's just not going to get their name talked about a whole lot. They have to hit somebody big. It has to be actually. It has to be T-Mobile. I think it has to be T-Mobile. Yeah, T-Mobile. Well, but the, but the reason why I say, you know, like if OnePlus goes to T-Mobile, I, I mean, because I, I don't disagree. I, I think if you're in a T-Mobile store, your sales instantly improve. But if you're in a T-Mobile store, you you are competing directly against iPhones and Galaxies and HTCs and LGs, and you become another one of those handsets that's just sort of on the shelf. I think if you go to an MVNO, a budget carrier. Well, and here's this phone. Your, your messaging of this is a flagship phone at a mid-range price carries more weight when people might be shopping a Galaxy J or an LG Stylo or something other in that in that yeah. mid-rangey price. And I think you your your OnePlus three stands to look far more attractive at that market segment than possibly being lost in the shuffle on a T-Mobile. See, I, I think the, re the reason I think T-Mobile is because T-Mobile also owns Metro anyway, number one. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, and so, there could always be carryover there. So so, yeah. so I think it's, it's, it's a strategy where you do both at the same time, and you really push to that Metro audience right. saying, but but when was know. the last time uh, you saw like a uh, you know like a an AT and T commercial focusing on a really low cost mid range phone as opposed to Cricket, where a Cricket commercial will feature a really inexpensive phone. Yeah, yeah but I, I I think I I think they can't limit themselves to one. I think they really need to look at getting in both AT and T and T Mobile just to get their phone in there, and they got to work on buying their own ad space within those places to push their brand, to give AT&T and T-Mobile a reason to market them. If they can prove themselves within those spaces and sell a number of, a number of units, that's going to allow them in the future to, to have more leeway and to have more push going forward um, in, in that aspect. So for right now, it's, it's, it's one of those things that they try to tie themselves to a one carrier-only solution, and, it, and that carrier's name isn't, isn't Verizon or something like that, but a ridiculously massive amount of, amount of subscribers. You're, you're you're really already you're already bat you already you know two strikes down. <laughs> yeah, you really or if they really want to go with a with a smaller like with, with a smaller uh, cell phone a carrier who doesn't really have that many devices, then they can go with something like Ting. But it's going to be stuck in a very regional kind of release for them. Then. Yeah, right? well, the, it would benefit them, but it would the, do, it's going to be very. The whole the hope, the hope is, is that and what I think eventually Google is going to allow Fi to work on pretty much any phone that you bring to it. And if that's the case, they can, they can essentially attach themselves and say, hey, 
that you can get our phone and use this service for this price and really put themselves as a flagship phone with uh, with sort of budget um, uh, billing and budget scaling. Like a, a, you can get our phone at a cheaper price with good service and all these other things that could kind of go that kind of comes along with that. Um, if they were to go, you know, with this particular network, I think that, that I think they'd have to hope for something for that to happen for them to kind of do it that way. Other than that, they need to look at jumping in and getting in. Hey, T-Mobile, we need you to do this. Hey, at t we need you to help us with this here. Put themselves out there because even if you're against the HTCs, the Samsungs, and the LGs, you you still need the site. You still need to be seen there. If you're seen next to them, you're at least seen as something of value. You're like, okay, this must be here. So th there must be something good about this phone if it's sitting next to this Galaxy, if it's sitting next to this LG, if it's sitting next to the HTC 10 here. It's not going to necessarily beat the Galaxy, but it has great competition against the rest of them. So it, 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 I don't think, I think, you know, Samsung's got their, their position on lock. iPhone's got their position on lock. LG, Samsung, LG HTC, Motorola, don't. And they could easily come in and disrupt that. And it got quiet. Oh, sorry, I'm responding because to LDH, LDH rights. Just to be clear, you can't oh. get every phone that is basically available in the market at any provider in the U.S. And I'm explaining to him how messed up our uh, uh, carrier. Yeah, now in the U.S., it just it doesn't exactly work that way. Basically, if you get a GSM phone, you're good for T-Mobile and at t for the most part, as long as you have the right amount of bands. You might miss on it. a few LTE bands, but it, it should work. It should work. It's when you try to do a Sprint and, and Verizon is where you're kind of boned until we, until we get to an all LTE sort of uh, market where voice is also going over LTE. That's when everything would just sort of. And also, cool. carriers have this really fun habit of locking phones. So when you yeah, buy yep. a T-Mobile phone, it won't work on at t until you jump through some hoops. You got to get unlock code and <clears throat> and do a few other things to to kind of get that to to happen and not even then sometimes it doesn't always not all the features will always work on the new carrier because that carrier with that phone even though it might be the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 for Verizon and you jump to T-Mobile there's still some things that may not work even though the phone technically has the bands and everything that's had to work for it because Verizon's changed it in some way and tweaked some software in some way as well and there order maybe some software tweaks that T-Mobile does in their phones that that Verizon phone doesn't have yeah, and then individual features like Wi-Fi calling or HD voice or whatever settings. Those yeah. things. And those uh, those settings probably. I, I will I will tell you this: if it's a Samsung phone on AT and T and you unlock it, your Wi-Fi calling will work on T-Mobile. So that's I, I've, I've oh, tried. That's that. good to know. Just to let you know. I've tried that for three generations now. Just to say. <laughs> 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 All right, so we've come to that point of the show where we uh, are are done. So, <laughs> well, no, before, we're before not, we go, we're not done we yet. Go, we can I talk to, more about Breath of the Wild. Let's go. I wanted to talk about something. I wanted to talk to Warren about something, actually, which, which I think we should start monitoring to see if this is actually a uselessness, right? So, Warren, I heard from the grapevine, actually, via e, um, uh, Enabong, that basically you've had to switch your um, Surface. Um, no, 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 Microsoft Band. Uh, yeah, your Microsoft Band, like, three times already. So that's, this is which the second. Is, Oh, this, second, is, okay, sorry. this is the third time I've done it for any version of the band, but this is the second time I've done it on the band too. This is the this is the second time I've done it on the band on the band too. Meaning this is my third band too. So I, I got one. Yeah, yeah, I'm on my. Yeah, it's like I'm on, I'm on my third band too. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we're experiencing basically the same thing where the battery just. In, just yeah, dies, it just right? dies, or the buttons don't respond, or doesn't charge up, or some old yeah. random other shit that makes no sense and you can't and, fix. And this happens like every every couple of months. Yeah, I this get is... one in a couple of months it dies, and then I get another one in a couple of months it dies. So like a... I went to the Microsoft store, right? And the guy said that this is a new batch. This is a totally new production batch, yeah. and it should be better. So I'm hoping yours is the same. So I let's see. So too. About the same time, or in a couple of months, if this dies, then we know there's an issue, and this becomes yeah. one of the. The, the most useful, useless devices I've ever owned. <laughs> that would piss me off so much if this thing dies again, because it's, it's just like, I, I gave it such a great review, and I'm just like, I hate when... Yeah, I like it. I, it, I it, it is amazing. I hate when you have little weird things like that happening, just like they got it back production line. It's to the point where I just walked into Microsoft store, they didn't even question, look up a warrant. <laughs> the Andrews were like, oh, yep, we got him in the back, what size do you wear? <laughs> Literally, it was like that in the store. 
And it was they're like, totally they're just like throwing them at you. Here, take three. That way, you yeah. won't be back for six months. Uh, I was talking to the Microsoft rep, and he he basically said, "Oh, this is very unusual. You, you know, we haven't had this happen like you know this many times for anyone." But uh, I'm not gonna give you a replacement. I'm gonna go and get you actually one of the new um, SKUs <laughs> just to make sure. I'm like, oh, okay, this sounds like you've done this before, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're trying to cover the tracks. I think what it is that they had some type of issue with the battery inside the first uh, batches or so, yeah. and that's the reason why this is happening, because I had a point where it didn't charge up anymore, or the battery... I don't know, is it the, do you think it's the battery or is the charger? It, but to me, it might be the charger. I got, a, I got a replacement charger as well, too. I brought my charger and the band up there, too, so they gave me Same a new charger and a new, and a, and a new band. So I'm going to see how it goes, this sort of go-around. I I I had I have a feeling it could have been a combination of both, yeah. you know that that it's because this is this is a drastically different charger than the uh, than the last band. This isn't the same thing. The last band, the only thing that messed up on me was that the 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 latch wouldn't stay latched anymore. Like it wouldn't stay tight. Okay. Because because it, because it, it ran out real quickly, but because uh, I guess the Whatever held it in just didn't work anymore. Oh, okay. It wasn't like a physical thing on the device itself that was a problem. It always charged up. That that part was fine. All right, so um, I would keep, keep, keep watch on that. It, it's a device that's been out for more than six months. It's about what nine months or so. So that's not good when you change your device that that often. Uh, yeah. you, you so roughly out. every three months we've got. Yeah, that's going on. So yeah, we'll we'll keep a we'll, we'll keep a, a tab on that, and we'll check every episode. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have like a little counter up in the left hand Is corner your of the band video. Two. Number of days one. since we replacement two, yeah. of Microsoft Band. <laughs> yeah. And it'll flip to zero. Wait, when did it's... you did you both replace it this last week? Yeah, I replaced mine last week. Yeah. I replaced mine within the last week. Yes. Okay, so we are on track. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. So um, yeah, we've come to that end point in the show where we find out what uh, we have on the various channels right now, and what we can expect next week. I'll start off with Mr. Warren Bowman. As always, what do you have on the channel, and what can we expect? I have stuff on the channel. Stuff of the video variety on the channel. <laughs> um, I think right now I have to actually look this up because it's been an extremely busy week. So, um, so I kind of can't think of the top of my head what I actually have on my own channel. It's just sad. <laughs> this, you know what I mean? That's some E3 Xbox stuff. You know, you, you know what I mean. It, um, I'm already I'm, looking at mine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes you throw up stuff and it's crazy. Um, so let's see. Right, right now I have up. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it last week. I have some uh, stuff up about the Gear Fit 2 and the Gear Icon X. Um, we have some stuff up talking about the Xbox One and Project uh, S Scorpio, mm -hmm. and I got a chance. I when I was at the Microsoft Store placing my band on uh, the 14th, uh, I was able to check out the Xbox One S custom controls they already had out, just sitting right there. So I took a quick look at some of the new Xbox One S controls that are pretty cool. They look really good. Some of the custom designs look pretty cool. It's gonna be interesting to see what people do with their with their controls when this uh, officially comes out in September. Yeah, maybe and, right. Huh? Yeah. The, yeah. The Facebook, almost like a maker kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's like it's like a like a motor maker style thing. The thing is, you can go and design it now too, and it'll be ready for you. You know, whenever it uh, it'll be like eighty. I think it's eighty bucks, and then I think it's another five or ten bucks to get the engraving. Yeah, it's che it's cheaper than all the custom engravings right now. The custom ones are you buy. I mean, you're paying like one thirty or so. Yeah. Uh, for all the other third party custom ones, minimum so. Only thing I only thing I would like to see is I would, I would like to see them hopefully get this maybe on uh, on a next version of the Elite controller to be able to customize this. Uh, I know that's going to be difficult because the Elite controller is it, it, it's geared towards a certain thing, so I know well, that's they, not the easy. They, 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 they can do it. Third parties do it already now, so they can do it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I understand that they can, but I'm just saying it's just like I think it's a little bit more complex than just. Uh, no, no. I mean, they already they have a, they have a Gears of War version of the Elite controller, all yeah, custom painted. Yeah. So yeah, they can, yeah. they can do that. Um, Mr. Juan Bagnell, what can we expect from uh, you at uh, Pocket Now and some Gadget Guy? <clears throat> so, um, Gadget Guy, not much. <laughs> I'm working on a on a couple of long-term <laughs> projects, but they're not going to be done over this next week. Um, just this morning, we released our full video review for the Sony Xperia X. So we're we're finally catching back Ooh. up with Sony. 
Um, we have to send a shout out to clove.co.uk because we got a review unit that was DOA. Aww. And so those guys scrambled and got us a loaner. And so we really appreciate them helping fill out our, especially for our international coverage because like Sony cares about the North American market. Ooh. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, I, uh, not to not to spoil the review, but I really wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years the Xperia brand is forked out of Sony proper, just like the Vio brand was. Xperia uh, made by about. Samsung. <laughs> As their budget line. <laughs> Xperia made by Ericsson. <laughs> oh, wow. um, so, uh, the LG, the LG Xperia line. It's their budget one. <laughs> oh, God, so crazy. So, um, that that's live on the channel now. You can watch that just this morning. Um, and then uh, over the the next couple days, I'm gonna be tracking some accessory reviews. We're gonna be catching up on that. I don't know what our strategy is gonna be for covering the One Plus Three. Um, so we don't. I don't know where on the schedule that's gonna fit. But I figure we'll get to it at some point. Maybe. Who knows. Okay. Um, Sam, anything from you? Um, no, not right now. I'm still working on a few of the, um, the few things I mentioned. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man, my real life has really been kicking my ass. I've been saying my real life. My life has been kicking my ass lately. And, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I haven't had much time to, to do any reviews, but I still have those in mind, in mind and I need to, they're, they're piling up, so I need to start knocking them out one by one. But just to remind you all, in case you guys don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We, we we have the uh, the NAS, which I I have taken a few pictures of, and um, I think I have a few videos out there. I mean, I have a few few videos already recorded about it. We just have to patch it together. Um, we're also uh, looking about the, um, the the Mod T, which is the um, the three D printer, and uh, a few other things here. So um, I'll keep you guys updated. Hopefully, one of those things will be done before next week. <laughs> Did he run away? No, he's on mute. I think. Uh, oh, I think. I think uh, he went to the door. Yeah, his yeah, door. I think he went to the door. His door. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'll just skip out. Sam can carry us for a oh, while. Oh my bad. Sorry. My dog. My rat. I was. I was just about to break out into a a, a really in depth and nuanced discussion on what your guys' favorite uh, flavors of risotto. Oh, I yes. see. I see. I, 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 I got it going with like sort of like a variety of like wild mushrooms. <laughs> and we're like, breaking it down there. also. By no. Okay. All right. Do you, do you, I mean, because I mean, you could also like shift gears and then start talking about like a paella, but that's, oh. that's like that. Uh, oh, look well, at that. Like, well, like, since, since Sam has stated what he he will eventually do <laughs> on the channel, um, we have stuff from E3. Um, you know, the Xbox One S uh, coverage on that, and the new controller, the new Astro A50 headset, um, God of War, some gameplay, about eight minutes of gameplay footage. And uh, just uh, best of E3 accessories and uh, the unboxing of the OnePlus. Today I'm going to drop my camera review of the OnePlus. Um, it's a nice camera, that's all I would say. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, next week we'll have some headphones and um, and uh, I think this, um, the uh, the NAS, the 716 NAS from Synology. <laughs> 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 that's it. <laughs> yeah, we're, both, we're, we're, like yeah. 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 we're both a little overdue on that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, want to say thank you very much. Definitely check out all the channels. Uh, you can check out uh, BW1. Uh, that's his channel there, as well as uh, Juan Bagnell at Pocket Now, and also you can check out us at Border Work. So this is Thunder E saying thank you, and always enjoy your entertainment. <laughs>